What if I told you that tucked away in the heart of the Mediterranean, there is a place filled with mysteries, holding secrets that date back thousands of years? An island where history and culture are intertwined more intricately than anywhere else. Welcome, my curious friends, as we're about to unravel 37 unknown facts about Malta, a journey that will change the way you look at this tiny yet colossal island. 1. Malta, officially known as the Republic of Malta, is an archipelago in the Mediterranean Sea that consists of the main island Malta and the smaller islands Gozo and Camino. 2. With an area of just 121 square miles, you can drive across the main island in just over an hour, but with a population of more than half a million people, it is one of the most densely populated countries in the world. 3. While the majority of the population lives in Malta, the small island of Gozo has a population of 32,000, and Camino has a permanent population of just two. 4. Several films and television shows have used the Maltese Islands as backdrops, including Game of Thrones, Captain Phillips, Troy, Munich, and World War Z, among many others. 5. Malta has been colonized by 11 different empires, the Phoenicians, Carthaginians, Romans, Byzantines, Arabs, Normans, Sicilians, Spaniards, Knights Templars, French, and finally the British Empire. 6. Malta has plenty of beautiful beaches. The best ones are St. Peter's Pool, Slendi Bay, Paradise Bay, Malihia Bay, San Blas, Ramla Bay, the Blue Lagoon on Camino, Mgar Iksini, once notorious as a smuggling site, is also an increasingly popular spot for swimmers, snorkelers, and divers. 7. The Hal Saflien Hypogeum, a 6,000-year-old underground burial chamber on the island of Malta, is one of the earliest known burial complexes. This remarkable site is an underground network of alcoves and corridors carved into soft Globigerina limestone. It holds the distinction of being one of Europe's only known Neolithic necropolises and one of the best preserved prehistoric sites in the world. 8. Apart from the Hall Safliani Hypogeum, there are two more historical sites in Malta that have been listed as UNESCO World Heritage Sites, the city of Valletta and the megalithic temples of Malta. 9. The Maltese islands are home to over 10,000 terrestrial and freshwater species. Of them, only 78 are endemic to the islands, some of these including the Maltese freshwater crab, the Sicilian shrew, the Maltese wall lizard, and the Maltese skate. 10. The Blue Lagoon is a picturesque bay along the small island of Camino and is known to be one of the most beautiful bays in Europe. 11. Malta has three national languages, Maltese, English, and Maltese Sign Language. Besides, almost 60% of the local population speaks Italian, while the Maltese language itself has been described as a blend of Arabic, French, English, and Italian. 12. On the south coast of Malta, located on a cliff and gazing out over the islet of Filfla, are the ancient temples of Hagar Kim in Minadra. The temples were built between 3600 and 3200 BC. Hagar Kim is unlike other Maltese temples in that it lacks a typical trefoil layout and is made up of a network of connected oval chambers with no particular configuration. A 700-meter, 2,300-foot downhill stroll from Hagar Kim leads to Minadra, which is more ornate. 13. Malta was the most heavily bombed place in World War II. Located in the heart of the Mediterranean, Malta is a small yet beautiful archipelago. However, due to its strategic position, it became one of the most bombed places on Earth from 1940 to 1942, as the Germans and Italians relentlessly bombed the island. At one point, it was bombed for 154 consecutive nights and days, reducing the country to rubbles and destroying most of its sacred churches and historical architecture. Although the war in Malta ended in 1942, it would take them decades to recover from that destruction. 14. After World War II reduced the nation to rubble, a great number of people migrated from the islands. With a majority of these people taking the sea route, Australia being part of the Commonwealth made it easier for these refugees to seek shelter down under. Moreover, the fact that it was an English-speaking country and in need of a labor force at the time also played a huge role in these people settling in the country. Currently, there are more than 200,000 people of Maltese descent in Australia. 15. Pastizi is a traditional savory pastry from Malta. 
This local pastry usually has a filling made from ricotta, which is known as pastizi taliacotta, or curried peas, which is known as pastizi talpizili. 16. Without St. Paul's shipwreck, Malta's history would be incomplete. In the New Testament, the incident happened on the island in the year 60 AD. According to legend, St. Paul was traveling to Rome to stand trial for being a rebel when he was stranded by this huge storm. He swam to shore to seek sanctuary in a cave following the wreck near St. Paul's Bay. According to legend, during his stay, St. Paul healed the governor's father of a fever, and as a result, the Maltese people were very grateful to him. From that point on, Malta became Christian, and St. Paul continues to be their distinguished symbol. 17. The Malta Summit was a meeting between the United States President George H.W. Bush and Soviet Union Secretary Mikhail Gorbachev on December 2-3, 1989, to bring an end to the Cold War. As per official reports, Bush and Gorbachev met on a warship just off the coast of Malta and discussed terms for the 45-year-long stalemate. Although it's still debated whether the summit brought the official completion of the Cold War, it signified the beginning to the end of the conflict. 18. Other than the honey-colored limestone the Maltese utilized to construct their homes, the island does not possess any natural resources of its own. The island's needs for fresh water are limited by the annual rainfall average of 578 millimeters, and these needs are mostly satisfied by the production of the many desalination plants situated throughout the island. 19. A few kilometers away from St. Agatha Tower near the village of Maleha is Popeye Village, also known as Sweet Haven Village. It is a purpose-built film set used during the shooting of the Hollywood movie Popeye in 1980 that has been converted into a small attraction fun park, consisting of a collection of rustic and ramshackle wooden buildings. 20. The St. John's Co. Cathedral, located in Valletta, is a magnificent example of Baroque design. From the Flemish tapestries designed by Peter Paul Rubens to the paintings of Grand Master Jean de la Cassière, Nicolas Contonaire in Manuel Pinto de Fonseca, as well as paintings which were formerly in the side chapels, visitors can find many magnificent artworks and elaborate decorations within. 21. At a junction between Southern Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East, Malta is situated in the midst of the Mediterranean Sea, 93 kilometers south of Sicily and 290 kilometers north of Africa. It usually takes two to four hours to travel by air to most capital cities in Europe and the Middle East from Malta. 22. Stufat Talfanek, more commonly known as rabbit stew, is the national dish of Malta. It is believed that the Phoenicians brought rabbits to the island about 3,000 years ago. Over time, the people living on the island started preparing the rabbit by simmering it in a wine and tomato sauce, along with some vegetables and potatoes. Although this dish isn't very popular on the island nowadays, you can still find it in some of the traditional restaurants. 23. Some say that Maltese people have an obsession for forts, so it shouldn't come as a surprise when the penal code specifically states that it is illegal to cut any grass in any fortification without a permit. Dumping trash near or inside a fort is likewise prohibited. 24. Although it has sometimes been suggested that the ancient Greeks gave Malta the name Melite, honey sweet, it is not known where the name originated from. Some believe it may have been a reference to the honey made by the endemic subspecies of bees that live on the island. 25. Malta has a deep Arabic influence. The Arabs were some of the earliest settlers on the island dating back to 870 AD. After the Normans defeated them in 1090, the Muslims and Christians lived harmoniously until Islam was expelled in the mid-13th century. Despite this, there is a touch of Arabic influence even in the modern culture of Malta. From irrigation techniques, historic architecture, and many towns and streets whose names originated from Arabic, to the strong Arabic influence on their cuisine, the influence of this culture on Malta is evident to this day. 26. The majority of its residents reside in Valletta, the capital of Malta, Sliema, the location of the nation's political and commercial center, and the Grand Harbor. Only 15% of Maltese reside in rural areas. Besides, more than 95% of the current population was born in Malta. 27. The St. Agatha Tower, also known as the Red Tower, is a large, bastioned watchtower in Meliaha, Malta. Built between 1647 and 1649 as the sixth of the Lazarus Towers, it was the last of the large bastion towers to be built in Malta. 28. 
Charles V of Spain gave the Knights of St. John of Jerusalem, sometimes referred to as the Knights Period, command of Malta in 1530. They successfully defended the island from the Ottomans during the Great Siege in 1565, leaving a lasting impression on Maltese history. 29. British case laws, both criminal and civil, are frequently cited in Maltese law courts, and Maltese legislation borrows heavily from it. 30. The island of Malta sees more than 60 cultural and religious feasts and celebrations throughout a calendar year. Among these, the Feast of Assumption, which celebrates St. Mary and lasts for the full second week of August, is one of the largest and most ornate Maltese feasts that involves parades, marching bands, and live concerts. 31. One of the things that Malta inherited from British rule is driving on the left. So if you are used to driving on the right side, driving in Malta may seem foreign to you. 32. Malta had a 150-year history of relying on the British armed forces as a fortress economy before gaining independence in 1964. With the majority of Maltese workers either employed directly by the British military or in businesses that supplied military equipment. Thus, with no natural resources to rely on, the government of the time made efforts to diversify the economy by promoting the development of sectors like manufacturing, tourism, financial services, and IT. 33. Nowadays, the main drivers of Malta's economy continue to be manufacturing and tourism, which together account for about 25% of GDP. 34. In Malta, it is illegal to run violently in any street or open area where there is a chance of hurting someone else. So, if you ever decide to visit the country, think twice before you even think about running down a busy street, or any street for that matter. 35. Given Malta's love for bird hunting, pigeons are protected to a degree that most birds on this island are rarely afforded, at least if they are domesticated. Shooting doves or pigeons other than wild doves or pigeons belonging to any other person is expressly prohibited by law. So, unless you're up for a trip to court, act with caution. 36. Additionally, if the thought of plucking that low-hanging juicy fruit off a tree in the field adjacent to where you are picnicking ever tempts you, simply turn away. In Malta, it is prohibited by the criminal code to pluck or eat fruit and other products from any privately owned field or property. 37. The Maltese people are by and large known as one of the most friendly and hospitable people in the world. They have a strong sense of community and make it a point to make visitors feel at ease and comfortable. Besides, the island also has one of the lowest crime rates in the world, another indicator of its good-natured people. That'll be all for this video. Which fact about Malta was your favorite? Do you know any other interesting facts about the place? Let us know in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, do like it and please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.